a legislative oversight committee that focuses on the North Carolina education lottery is hearing a renewed push from Wake County Representative Paul Stamm. Stamm wants what he says is a more honest accounting of lottery gaming with the odds and winnings more accurately presented to reflect taxes and the amount a gamer would win if he or she would accept those lump sum payments. House Speaker Pro Tempore Paul Stamm joins us from Wake County and uh, Lottery critic, are you a lottery opponent? I, I, I am. <laughs> I sued to stop them many years ago. Well, it's here, and people obviously like playing it. It makes the state a lot of money. What's the beef? Well, the beef is that most of the money is made by false and deceptive advertising. Just give you a couple of easy examples. You're riding down the highway, you see a billboard, $123 million for Powerball. Well, actually, the prize is only worth about $70 million and with taxes it's really worth about 40 million. So you're betting as if it were 123 million, but the prize is not worth near that much and they know it. Well, how many people playing the lottery, you hope you win, but how many people do you think think they'll win? Well, that is a, an argument that the lottery people use and they say, well, uh, people who gamble don't care about the odds. You know, they're just playing for entertainment. Well, that's probably true of some of them, but some of them are playing the odds and you shouldn't cheat them. Okay, well, Honest Lottery, if it becomes law, what will it force on the lottery? How will they be communicating in the future if this, if this passes? Well, their advertising would have to give the actual odds of winning the prizes that they advertise. That's, that, that's it. But what about the dollar it. amount? If it says $365 million, I'll get that if I choose the 20 or what if 30 year annuity, right? I mean, that's. Well, that's the uh, nominal value, but the true present value yeah. is about a little bit more than half of that. And that needs to be disclosed because that's the true value of the prize. Now, maybe you say, I don't care how big it is. But I'd say that's not true because it's precisely when the prizes get big that people get excited and start, uh, you know, buying their tickets. Well, if they knew that those that the jackpot was about half of what they thought it was, or what it was advertised, then they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Some of some of them would not do it. With that hundred, over one hundred supportive votes in the House to pass the Honest Lottery Act, uh, why not go engage for a full repeal of the North Carolina Education Lottery? Well, there's not the a sufficient number of votes to repeal it. So there's a huge gap here politically right. between a repeal right. and a restriction or, an, uh, right. well, as you call it, a more honest accounting of but, what the lottery really but, is. But here's the, the effect today is that a lot of our citizens think that they have supported education because they bought some lottery tickets. Because all of the advertising from the lottery commission says, oh, we spent $100 million on education, we spent $500 million, whatever it is. But they don't realize that that's about 2% of the state budget. And yet, it is causing support for education funding to falter because they think they gave at the lottery. That, we were told last decade that wouldn't happen. That this money will be in addition to strong school support of regular tax revenue. That didn't happen? The, the day that the lottery passed, the supplanting of regular revenue began. It, it, it was there from the beginning. And the teachers groups that were so in favor of the lottery, I think probably now rue the day that they had ever heard the word because it reduces support for education. I mean, when people see that the government is trying to con people to take advantage of their ignorance of multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction to educate other people, they wonder what kind of education we're trying to do. Would school funding be better today had that lottery never passed? I believe so, sure. And, and this is primarily at the local level where, uh, you know, it's subject to referendums mm -hmm. and bonds and, and things like that. I, I believe at the local level, uh, support for education would be much stronger. So you, if you get the Honest Lottery Act through, it will, it will create a different picture of the lottery from a branding perspective, may reduce demand for tickets and participation. It, what it, do you do with the money that's lost there? Because people would willingly pay that and get that into the state coffers. Well, the fiscal research doesn't uh, estimate any loss in funding. 
uh, I would disagree with them. I think there'll be some loss. Who knows how much? But whatever loss it is, is from people who previously were deceived, now know the truth, and now are not gambling. And wouldn't that be a good thing, to change deceit into truth? What do you think is going to happen in this session? Can you convince the Senate to take up this bill and to vote on it, and, and much less pass it? Well, it was a bipartisan bill. It, um, uh, I don't know any reason why they wouldn't take it up, so we'll see. Short session, one month from now. Representative right. Stam, Paul Stam, Wake County, House Speaker Pro Tim, thank you so much for being Thanks, on. Kelly.